Hi, I'm Deke. Welcome to Deke Pod, my series of once every other weekly videos on computer graphics and digital imaging. This is my way of dressing up in a hockey mask and stabbing you in the chest without the man saying, Deke, you cannot do that. That is murder. No, it's not. It's analogy. I mean, do you realize how long it would take me to personally stab each and every one of you in the chest? I just don't have the bandwidth for that. But the man, he's such a literalist, by which I mean jerk. Today's special Halloween episode, Faking an HDR Portrait, in which I show you how to take a drab, dead JPEG photo and wake it up. Fill it with so much life, make it so real, so palpable, you could reach out and touch it. And if you can reach out and touch it, it can reach out and touch you. Build your own monster, Frankenstein. What the hell is HDR? Now, before I can show you how to fake an HDR portrait, or why you'd even want to, you have to at least sort of understand what HDR is, because only a mad scientist could really understand it. The letters HDR stand for High Dynamic Range, but as with most acronyms beyond TLA, that means nothing. One way to think of HDR is that it packs lots of extra bits, little computer digits. It packs nearly a hundred of them into every single pixel to produce an insane number of colors. How insane? Theoretically, as insane as 79.2 octillion color variations, which were we talking ice cubes, would be enough to cool every Coca-Cola ever consumed, even in countries where they like them warm, plus create an unmeltable eight-lane ice highway to the sun. That many colors gives you a lot of flexibility, but you can't just go out there and shoot an HDR image. Digital cameras don't have that kind of range. Instead, you shoot lots of photos and merge them together. Like you might shoot one properly exposed, one overexposed, and one underexposed, and then blend them into a single impossibly exposed Mongo color composite. The results can be amazing. Look at the level of detail, down to the last ingrown whisker, the last oily pore. It's like having this dude way up in your personal space. Can't you just smell him? But this is no small feat. This kind of HDR imaging requires special software. The files are huge, and your subject has to hold perfectly still throughout the entire sequence. Or you get something like this, with, say, the tie lining up beautifully, and everything else a complete mess. I know guys who can do this kind of stuff, and of course, I resent them. There's something deeply, deeply wrong with someone who can pull off an HDR portrait this successfully. Which is why this isn't an HDR portrait at all. It's a fake. I went from this to this, armed with nothing more than a single stagnant JPEG image, a few volts of electricity, and an abnormal brain. SH in LAB. Let's start with this photo of my son, Sam. So he's wearing a little ice cream. Just because you don't look good in ice cream doesn't mean he doesn't. So it's agreed. The model is gorgeous, but the photo, it's no good. It's backlit, low saturation, murky shadows, and yet it contains everything we need to make something truly fantastic. First step, absolutely, we need Lab for this one. You remember Lab, the robot, his package. We want to keep things non-destructive, so make it a smart object. Now choose this command right here. Won't be hard to find, it's the only one available. It lightens the shadows and darkens the highlights, which means it expands the darkest and lightest colors at the expense of the ones in between which is great because the shadows and highlights, they are the keepers of the detail. My shadows are really filled in, so I'll expand them radically. This is a light image, so a lighter touch on the highlights. Okay, that looks like crap. To really bring out the details, we got to address the details. Take that back. I could scoot this around, but really, good as was. Okay, this is nice. These are not magic numbers, people. I'm just looking at the preview. That ain't gonna do anything, because we're in lab, and that wants to go up. Perfect. Okay, so this is before, this is after. Check out the detail in the eyes. Pretty remarkable difference. And by the way, this command, shadows, highlights, not so good in RGB, but it works great in lab because it only hits the lightness channel, never the color. Nice. Curve up the colors. All right, so let's fix the colors. Curves is the only way to go. Normally, I like to protect you people from the complexities, but this time I can't. I know, curves, blood-curdlingly spooky. That's why I have some background info at my site, deke.com, to help you out. In the meantime, let's do some symmetrical stuff in the A and B channels. Not bad, but needs finessing. See how that adds some pink? Then let's add a point here so we can infuse the image with yellow, which is a good thing. In Photoshop, yellow doesn't mean cowardly, it means healthy glow. And this is one golden glowified child. High pass for sharpness. One of the keys to faking HDR is sharpness. You want the image so sharp it stings. High pass is your best bet, especially for portraits. Of course, looking at this, you think I'm a big liar. But go here, choose this, and the effect is perfect. Too yellow, too intense? Just back off the opacity, and look at that. Nicely done, us. 
The HDR look without the HDR hassle. I mean, can you imagine a little boy staying still for a millisecond, let alone multiple exposures? And yet we got ourselves the depth, the detail, the dark, dreadful drama of HDR. Conclusion. Which do you find more frightening? The mad scientist who's gonna electrify your living corpse? Or the little kid who's gonna wipe his sticky goo all over your pant leg? They're both pretty damn scary. So goodbye, everybody, and be forewarned. I've armed you with a dangerous power, the power to turn flat JPEGs into razor-sharp monsters. Clearly, you can use that power for evil, or you can learn to wield it responsibly. How? Check out my line of one-on-one -on -one books at deke.oreilly.com, or immerse yourself in my comprehensive videos at lynda.com slash deke. And you're always welcome at deke.com, where the torches of knowledge burn as brightly as pagan funeral pyres. I'm supposed to be good. As Brightly as lots of little angels holding up their cell phone in a Toby Mac concert. In the meantime, stay tuned for more videos. I have lots more creative pumpkins to populate your eager patch here at Deep Pod.